Facebook and Instagram at VOA Wonder Hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30 minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Coming up on the program, Brian Lynn reports on new efforts from NASA to develop and test vehicles designed to explore the moon. Earlier this month, NASA said it had picked three private companies to design lunar explorers to be used as part of its Artemis program, which aims to get astronauts back on the moon. Later, Jill Robbins and Andrew Smith present the lesson of the day on good news and bad news. But first, Jill and Andrew read one of the winning entries from our Teach Us About Ukraine writing contest. The essay is called, Miko Live is a City on the Wave. Miko Live is a port city near the Black Sea in southern Ukraine. In 2022, Russian forces repeatedly tried to take the city from Ukrainian forces without success. The attacks followed months of bombings and airstrikes that destroyed hospitals, schools, buildings, and the city's water system. Alexander Senkovich is the mayor of Mykolaiv. He told UN News, We were bombed for 230 days. 159 people died, and... 750 were injured. A lot of the city was destroyed because there was shelling everywhere. Senkovich said almost half a million people lived in the city before the war. Now there are about 350,000, including 50,000 who fled from other parts of Ukraine. As I'm writing this, there is an air raid alarm, but I cannot stop. When I walked along the streets on the 605th day of the war, I could see houses destroyed by Russian missiles on one side and the happy faces of children playing on the other side in the park. There was a sense of pride on the faces of their mothers, a pride of the city and the people that did not give in to the invaders. As we defended Mykolaiv, we protected the south of Ukraine from occupation and its horrors. The war taught us to distinguish the sounds of missiles, including grads, peonies, caliber, and shahed. And it taught us that there is no better place in the world than our hometown, Mykolaiv. Mykolaiv is a city where history and culture are connected with the Black Sea. The port city was founded by Catherine II in 1789 during the Yekaterinoslav expedition led by General Mykolaiv Arkas. The city has since become an important center for exports and imports, and the development of the maritime infrastructure of Ukraine. But Mykolaiv is more than just a city of commerce. Museums and galleries of Mykolaiv act as a chronicle of the cultural development of the city. In the heart of the city on Soborna Street, is Chestnut Square, with the statues of the lions of Arkas, guarding St. Nicholas, the patron saint for sailors and the city. The city is also known for its cultural heritage, 
and places often visited by well-known Ukrainian writers and thinkers like Taras Shevchenko, Lesa Ukrainka, Nikolai Gogol, and Mikhailo Kotsubensky. Their works form the basis of Ukrainian literature. When famous American writer Mark Twain visited Mykolaiv in 1867 during his trip to Europe and the Middle East, he left descriptions of his stay in the city in his letters and notes. Mykolaiv is known for its contribution to shipbuilding, with Ivan Hertz, a famous ship designer, and Vice Admiral Ivan Bubnov. In 1788, the city installed one of the first traffic lights to control ship movement in the Ingul River. In 2013, the city created the youngest professional music group to perform classical and modern works. Mykolaiv is one of the cities of Ukraine with a high level of learning foreign languages. Many local schools and institutes offer programs for teaching English and other languages. Mykolaiv Zoo was founded in 1901. Its first director was the famous naturalist and bird expert Alexander Fomichev. Over the years, Mykolaiv Zoo has become home to many species of animals and birds, including endangered ones. It is now a popular holiday destination for locals and visitors and helps in the study of nature. The Kiev School of Economics estimates that damage to the city totals $860 million. Senkovich, the mayor, said the city is working with the UN to rebuild its future. He added that Mykolaiv is called the Hero City, but he called it the City of Heroes because this applies to all its people. I'm Andrew Smith. And I'm Jill Robbins. The American Space Agency, NASA, has announced new efforts to develop and test vehicles designed to explore the moon. Earlier this month, NASA said it had chosen three private companies to design lunar explorers to be used as part of its Artemis program. Artemis aims to return astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1972. NASA has set a target landing date of September 2026 to place astronauts on the moon once again. NASA announced the names of three companies that will each propose designs for the new vehicles, they are Texas-based Intuitive Machines, Lunar Outpost of Colorado, and Venturi Astrolab of California. The space agency said it will consider the designs of all three companies, but will only award one of them a development contract. NASA describes the explorer it wants built as a lunar terrain vehicle, or LTV. 
It said the contract involving the project would be worth up to $4.6 billion over 15 years. The winning company will be expected to produce a full demonstration vehicle. The company Intuitive Machines developed a private moon lander that successfully touched down on the moon in February. The company announced late last month that the lander, called Odysseus, had powered down permanently after carrying out several research experiments. Jacob Bleacher is NASA's chief exploration scientist. He told reporters the LTV will be an important step in establishing a longer-term exploration and presence on the moon. He added, I like to imagine the views and the vistas that the LTV will enable us to see from the surface of the moon. NASA said it will aim to launch the LTV for astronaut activities on the moon during Artemis V. This part of the Artemis program is currently set for 2030, NASA's latest budget request shows. NASA said it plans to test the vehicle on the surface of the moon before Artemis V arrives. Astronauts will use the LTV to travel around the lunar surface, conducting scientific research during the agency's Artemis campaign at the Moon and preparing for human missions to Mars, NASA said. NASA officials say the LTV will need to be able to survive the extreme conditions found at the Artemis landing site at the Moon's South Pole. This will require the vehicle to have a strong and dependable power system and the latest in communications and navigation technologies. The vehicle will also need the ability to explore the Moon on its own without astronaut drivers. The LTV will carry out exploration activities, including transporting scientific equipment and collecting materials on the lunar surface. NASA said these abilities will permit astronauts to carry out research activities in a very wide area. We will use the LTV to travel to locations we might not otherwise be able to reach on foot, increasing our ability to explore and make new scientific discoveries, Bleacher said. NASA said the contract includes technical services as well as equipment. The agency said all the companies chosen had agreed to carry out the agency's exact technical requirements for the LTV. Venturi Astrolab said its planned vehicle, called FLEX, is designed to carry two astronauts, support scientific exploration with a robotic arm, and withstand the extreme temperatures at the lunar south pole. Lunar Outpost said it was working with partners including American companies Lockheed Martin, General Motors, Goodyear, and Canada's MDA Space. Lunar Outpost leader Justin Cyrus told the French news agency AFP the company plans to use its expertise in technology and the automotive industry to provide a true off-road vehicle capable of allowing us to live and work on the surface of the moon. Lunar Outpost is planning to put a small, crewless explorer on the moon later this year as part of Intuitive Machines' next lander mission. I'm Brian Lynn.
Now, Brian Lynn joins me to talk more about his science report. Thanks for being here, Brian. Of course, Dan. Thank you for having me. This week, you reported on some new vehicles NASA is having built for future exploration of the moon. We learned that three companies were chosen to develop demonstration models for NASA to test. Do we know how similar these vehicles will be? So at this point, the companies chosen to compete for this NASA contract have provided some details about their vehicle designs and have released some photos and videos showing what these explorers might look like. Um, what I can say is these early designs are definitely quite different. Uh, the planned vehicle from Venturi Astrolab, for example, has more of a traditional rover look, while the vehicles from Intuitive Machines and Lunar Outpost look much more futuristic and seem more similar to off-road vehicles seen on Earth. But despite the different designs, NASA did have very specific requirements that all these vehicles must have, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, the main ones have to do with making these vehicles dependably able to perform well under the extreme lunar conditions. Uh, so this would cover many things from the materials vehicles are built with to the ability to operate by themselves on the moon. And NASA says another big requirement has to do with power systems and management. Power has been a major issue in why some recent spacecraft sent to the moon experienced problems. And one of the biggest difficulties with these designs is that they have to be tested on Earth and Oftentimes, issues aren't discovered until they're actually deployed on the moon. All right. Thanks again for joining me, Brian. And thanks for your report. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan. Learning English has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions and experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. And my name is Jill Robbins. And I'm Andrew Smith. You're listening to the Learning English Podcast. Welcome to the part of the show where we help you do more with our series, Let's Learn English. The series shows Anna Mateo in her work and life in Washington, D.C. In the lessons we have been watching lately... Anna has been trying new things at work. In lesson 18, she tried reading the news. And the best word to describe that experience is challenging. <laughs> Ms. Weaver asked Anna to read the news without showing her feelings. Anna is very expressive, so that was difficult. I hope her boss gives her another opportunity in this lesson. Let's watch the beginning of Lesson 19, a lesson we call, When Do I Start? Anna is talking with her boss on the phone to explain why she is late coming to work. Hi there. Summer in Washington, D.C. is hot and sunny. I always ride the metro to work. 
Riding the Metro is cool and fast, but today it's closed. So I am walking to work. <sighs> Ms. Weaver, I am late this morning. The metro is closed, so I am walking to work. That's too bad. It's really hot today. Yes, it is. When you arrive, please come to my office. I have important news to tell you. Of course. Goodbye. My boss has news for me. The question is, is it good news? or bad news. This is a phrase you will often hear in jokes and daily conversation. We talk about something being good news or bad news and give our listener a choice to hear one of them first. What do you think she will hear, Andrew? I think she might hear some bad news since she had so many problems trying to read the news objectively, as we said in our last podcast. Let's watch and find out. Hello, Ms. Weaver. Anna, I have good news and I have bad news. Which do you want to hear first? The good news. No. Okay, the bad news. Notice the way Ms. Weaver asked Anna to choose. She said, which do you want to hear first? If we have some difficult news or criticism to tell someone, we can add a more pleasant comment to make it easier to take. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, right? Let's see what the bad news is first. The bad news is you are not good at reading the news. Oh, I am very sorry to hear that. So, starting next month, you will not read the news. Next month is July. You are firing me in July. No, I am not firing you in July, or in August, or in September. That is the good news. Okay, you are not firing me. I am not reading the news. What will I be doing? <laughs> Once again, you're listening to the lesson of the day on the Learning English Podcast. I'm Jill Robbins. If any of our listeners are not familiar with the word Anna uses here, firing, it means when someone is ordered to leave their job. Here we heard good news and bad news. The good news was that Anna will not lose her job. The bad news is Anna is not very good at reading the news. I wonder what new position Anna will have. Did you notice how Anna summarized what Ms. Weaver says or what she thinks she said? This is a skill we call summarizing. That means saying something you read or heard again in a shorter and simpler way. A lot of school assignments involve summarizing. In fact, you could say a big part of our job here at VOA Learning English is summarizing. We take news stories and put them into simpler sentences. And Anna summarized what she heard Ms. Weaver say as a way of confirming her understanding. Okay. You are not firing me. I am not reading the news. What will I be doing? You're listening to the lesson of the day on the Learning English podcast. I'm Andrew Smith. Maybe Ms. Weaver should review Anna's skills and try to find something she's more able to do. Great idea, Andrew. I think you'll be happy with the next clip then. Well, you are good at asking questions. You are good at talking to people. You are good at showing your feelings. And you are great at being silly. 
Thank you, Ms. Weaver. But what does all that mean? I have a new assignment for you. Your skills are perfect for a new show. A children's show. A children's show. That is awesome. When do I start? You start next month. Start thinking of ideas for the show. <laughs> that sounds familiar. I think she has tons of ideas for the show, too. But you're right. Ms. Weaver helps Anna to see her strengths and gives her a new assignment. She doesn't want to spend a lot of time discussing them, so she summarizes them this way. Well, you are good at asking questions. You are good at talking to people. You are good at showing your feelings. And you are great at being silly. Jill, have you ever changed roles at a job? <laughs> yeah, lots of times. Um, but I had one job where I started out with limited responsibilities. But gradually, my supervisor saw that I had some skills in organizing projects. So I was given more responsibility. Skills like that can be learned through experience or by working with someone who is more experienced than you are. I think you might also have some talent, which is a quality you're born with. I've never thought about that talent in relation to career skills. How about you? What talents and skills do you think are most valuable in your job? Hmm, that's a good question, um, and I think that's kind of a chicken and egg question or chicken and egg idea. That means it's hard to say which one comes first. I think I've developed some of my natural talents, like being able to use my voice well, maybe being able to sing a few simple songs or something like that. And those skills can help with broadcasting. I think other skills like writing have come mostly from my education and working to improve them. I think you have great people skills, too, like the soft skills we talked about in another podcast. I had to learn those skills myself because I was very shy when I was younger. Yes, those soft skills sometimes take some time to learn, just like other skills. Now, I think before we go today, we should give our listeners a good news, bad news joke. Are you sure? <laughs> Most of those jokes are pretty dark. I mean, they deal with some serious issues like illness. That's true, but don't worry. I have a good one. Here's the joke. There's a troop of soldiers out in the middle of the desert. The captain gets his men together and says, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is we have run out of food and there is nothing to eat but sand. Oh, I know this one. The captain goes on to say, the good news is there's plenty of sand. Oh, so that's all for this lesson of the day on the Learning English Podcast. I'm Jill Robbins. And I'm Andrew Smith. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And that's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak.